Did you know that Rhydon speaks like an infant? Goo goo go goo 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 gaga whatever. Anyway, hey, welcome back to my Pokemon Crystal walkthrough. Today, we're going to be taking on the Kimono Girls. That's all we're going to be doing in this episode today. And it's very strange. Their sprites out in the overworld are different colored, yet when we face them, they're the exact same sprite. Pretty lazy, Nintendo. Seriously? You, you couldn't recolor the sprites of the kimonos? That's all you had to do. You didn't even have to change their facial features. Anywho, lazy sprite animations and colorations aside, the kimono girls act as a really great barometer to see if you need to make some significant changes to your team. Even if you were able to wiggle your way past the four gyms, maybe you somehow spammed a certain move, I mean, for Morty's gym, that was all about bite spamming. Uh, Whitney's gym could be a bit tougher, but still, you could wiggle your way by. Uh, the Kimono Girls really stop you dead in your tracks to test your true power. It's interesting because I've never fought the Kimono Girls with such unevolved Pokemon. I'm still up in the air if I'm going to evolve my Cyndaquil. As I said, I may keep him just as Cyndaquil, because that's how I started Crystal, with a Cyndaquil, and that's what's gotten me to this level of Pokonosity, so maybe I'll keep him as one, but still, I do love uh, the Typhlosion, so I don't know, I'm conflicted for sure. Ooh, you're good with Pokemon. Yeah, well, you're not good at choosing different colored clothing to wear. And Mom, what are you calling at a, us at a time like this? More shopping? Oh, of course, you used our money. I guess if it's a gift for us, I can't really complain. After all, it's very rare I go to the Pokemon Center. Hmm. Let's go just see what you have. I don't know what order these Kimono Girls are in. So it's a surprise! Same color, same face. Not even standing a different direction. That can be nothing but laziness. At this stage in the game, the evolutions has expanded two more times to equal five possible evolutions that Eevee could turn into. Originally, it just started out with Vaporeon, Jolteon, and Flareon, Water, Fire, and Electric. And then it expanded to Psychic and Dark with Umbreon and Espeon which are two of my top favorite Pokemon in the second generation, specifically Umbreon. And in fact, I may consider raising an Umbreon too. It'll take a while, because it only evolves through friendship. Same goes for Espeon. The only difference is that Espeon has to be friended to you, befriend you, and be friendly towards you during the daytime, and gain a level, while Umbreon needs you to do it at night. And you can check how much your Pokemon dig you back in Ecker back in Ecrateek. We're in Ecrateek City right now. That's what happens when you look at the borders when commentating. But back in Goldenrod City, right near where the bike shop was, there's a house with a girl inside who will tell you how much your Pokemon actually like you. And that's important if you're planning to evolve Pokemon through friendliness. Another possible team member that you would have already swooped up by now would be Togepi, and it too only evolves through happiness. I didn't know that back in the day, and when I thought when my Togekiss evolved, I thought it was because pure leveling up. I didn't even know anything about deeper evolution mechanics, the fact that you had to trade, there were stones. Uh, yeah, I, you know, maybe I knew a little bit about the evolution stones, but... As far as friendship raising goes and trading, I was clueless. But speaking of clueless, Prince Dozo has gained a level! Woo! We may be stronger than we look, but I think we could be stronger. And I only say this because I recall my first time on this was not as difficult as it seems to be now. Again, I'm challenging myself to do more rigorous training 
and try some strategies that I've never done before, because in the past I was a Poke Noob. Now I am, well, not a Poke Master. I don't think there's any such thing. Awesome! Look at that Umbreon! And it's tail wagon animation. Love that! I would rewind that if I were you. I probably will a thousand bajillion times. Tail wag. But that's an awesome sprite. I really, really love the sprites in Crystal. Anyway, I was a Poke Noob then, and I'm much better at Pokemon now. So I want to try different strategies. But if I recall back in Heart Gold, I had a Typhlosion around here. <laughs> Pretty big difference. I still have my Cyndaquil. But he's still got the firepower that we're looking for. Or not! Oh shit! Wow! That's pathetic. Come on, Cyndaquil. Fire you far! I, even if you have to charge it, go ahead. I gotta put more coals on the quill. BBQing this Umbreon kebab is not going so well. I keep getting sand in Cyndaquil's already closed eyes. You know, that was funny. I'm sure I'm not the only one who was confused by this, uh, but Pokemon was one of the first anime series I ever witnessed. So, up until then, I was only watching American cartoons, and I never saw the closed eye look, like Brock has. So, when it came to Pokemon, I didn't understand what was going on. I always thought, why is his eyes closed? Is he blind or something? What, what is up with that? <laughs> I always thought that maybe one day Brock would be completely scared or bewildered and his eyes would finally show. I don't know. It doesn't seem to happen, though. I guess those slits are his eyes, period. <laughs> what? Cyndaquil's evolving? I don't think so, 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 so. Yep still up in the air if I'm going to evolve him or not. I'm curious, what do you guys do as far as training your Pokemon? Do you like to rush to evolution? I used to. That used to be the highlight of Pokemon sometimes for me. Or do you kind of like to wait it out and plan strategically? Post in the comments below. I'm very interested to see what your training methods are. Oh, and also, another thing I want to ask you is... Oh, look at that. Freaking awesome. Again, sorry. Get caught by the sprites every time they come up. Crystal had some of the most beautiful looking sprites. I just, I wish I had that coloration in my world. I wish I could add a texture pack to real life that was crystal. And everything was in the colors and blocky textured of, Chris, of Crystal's world. That would just, oh man, that would make me the happiest guy on earth. Anyway, also what I want to get your opinions on is what you think of the new intro. I'm going to be honest with you, I think it sucks, uh, and as such, I'll put the request out for you guys. Recently I've been getting a few PMs on the terms of music to use in my walkthroughs, and I think that's excellent because it's a win-win situation for us both. It's, it's not even both, but for everybody. Uh, it's a win-win for you if you create music and you want to get it out there because, you know, I'm not a super popular YouTuber, but 3,000 subs are nothing to gawk at. So it helps you get exposed as a musician, and especially if I like your tunes, like Star Tropics King, for example, makes great Poké remixes, then you're going to be mentioned, you're going to be realized a lot more and have your work out there. Plus, people just watching and who don't create any music get to hear some awesome tracks that they otherwise wouldn't have been turned on to. It's a win-win for everybody. I have music that doesn't get copyright claimed. I help you guys. You help me. It's freaking awesome. So, now I request your help again. If you are talented in perhaps whatever program you use, I'm not even going to restrain it to one particular program. If you're a master at Windows Movie Maker and you can make me an excellent intro for Crystal, then go right ahead. I could probably host a contest, in fact, and I think I might do that. The prize? I think I'm gonna make it the Shiny Suicune that was an event Pokemon last year but is now unobtainable. Actually, was it last year or a couple of months ago? 
couple of months ago. It wasn't even last year, now that I think of it. But it's not available anymore for download. So you can have yourself a chance to win a shiny Suicune. I just came up with that on the fly, so we'll see what happens if you guys are interested. We have lovely Pokémon. May I see them in battle? Yes, you most certainly can. Because we must defeat you in order to progress. That's a common mistake of early players of Pokémon who come to this game. Not exploring every building and completely missing the Kimono Girls. I get a lot of comments in my Heart Gold walkthrough saying, How did you get Surf? Where is Surf? It's right here, guys, in Ecrotique City. I didn't say anything in the beginning of the episode because I like to think that you all stay tuned for the ending, but this is how you get Surf. You have to go through and defeat every Kimono Girl, so not only is it something to test your Pokémon out with to see if you have good type balances in your team, make sure that it's not too overpowered with grass or too weak because you only have water types, it balances your team well, but it also is there to give you Surf. And looking at it now, having some programming experience, very base level, because I only worked with RPG Maker, I think this is a really great element to add into the game. It doesn't, I mean, it forces the player to do this, but it forces the player also to think about their team. Otherwise, they could just be going about their spammy ways and only utilizing one type of Pokemon. I think that the Kimono Girls act as a great mechanism to make the overall RPG experience of Crystal, Gold, and Silver a more balanced one. And another great thing about this series overall, the ability to surf. I remember when I first got the ability to surf, and do keep in mind that Crystal was my first game ever, I was really flabbergasted at how far I could go. It further spurred my ideas and ambitions for glitching and breaking the game, not physically, but code-wise, to try and access other areas that I thought were hidden from me. So, after you defeat the Kimono Girls, talk to this guy. He's very impressed with your battling style, and he'll give you TMO3. I mean, HMO3. TMO3 would just be done after one use. HMO3, that is Surf. But I was completely consumed once getting Surf to try and find other methods of finding other hidden areas. And of course these hidden areas in my mind that I imagine never existed, and never will probably. But it spurred my creativity and imagination at an early age and it got me to write down some interesting things in notebooks. It got me to start programming games in my mind. And with that last sentiment of inspiration, I leave you.